uh, in fact, it's a, a, a way, this, this first session is a kind of introduction to the understanding of uh, the whole vision that we have in Kai, but mainly also some of the critical questions that we have. Let me start with a short introduction, three points that I wanted to make when it comes to uh, 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 the legal tradition we are talking about Islamic law. If you come back to the, 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 the beginning of uh, Islam and the beginning of, uh, 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 in, the, in the presence of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, uh, what we had very quickly from him and then from even him sending Mu'az ibn Jabal to Yemen, we had something which was the legal tradition was the first clear Islamic science in the way they were dealing with the environment. And, and three characteristics are important here that are important in the way this tradition was thought from the very beginning is in fact very pragmatic and straight to implementation. And it came in fact from something that we need to get, which is the, the revelation of the Quran. The Quran is a, an eternal book. Uh, 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 and for us is the very word of God. This is why we have critical thinking also with some of the new trends that we see around here questioning the very essence of the Quran. There is no discussion about us. That's Kalamullah, it's Kalamullah, meaning that for us is Qat'i Dalala wa Qat'i Qat'i Tugud wa Qat'i Dalala. Everything which is coming from the Quran for us is the very word of God, which is the uh, uh, foundation of Islam for us. But something which is important is the revelation over 23 years makes it from the beginning when it comes to al ahkam when it comes to the ruling, very pragmatic. In fact, the revelation was very often answers to practical questions. So, so that's very important because it means that the legal tradition from its essence in the revelation is very rooted in history and practical answers. So, so, so that's important because the first science is not theology, it's not kalam, it's not, it's not, it's very pragmatic. It's very close to the, the the problems that you have facing the problem, and this is also so. The nature of the revelation is also something that is shaping the nature of the legal tradition in the mindset, in the way you have to deal with how do we implement this, how do we have to deal with such a situation. Uh, what came afterward is that from very direct connection, very direct interaction with the environment, and the environment meant uh, uh, many things. It meant the, the, the interaction with people, so first within the community, within uh, among the believers, with people of other faiths, with the environment, but not only, also, and this is something that was experienced by the people, the companions of the Prophet, as is the change of the cultures, because Makkah was not Medina, and this was felt by the people, it was felt by the companions. So the, 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 the fact that the ahkam, the fact that uh, the rules, the fact that uh, uh, the way it was thought was very much inter, uh, in interaction with these four <coughs> people uh, within the community, so among believers, with people of other faiths, with nature, and with culture. These dimensions are important and with the way the people were. So it gave from the very beginning a very uh, important uh, 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 light of essence, the legal tradition. Now, what was done by scholars over time, and I don't want to come to uh, 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 details here because we don't, first we don't have time, and this is where, for example, we find some of these elements in the book, is that in fact from this, with people interacting in the time of the Prophet and just after this, and the way you know uh, people were, uh, and the, the Islamic community was living in Mecca, and then in Medina, and then elsewhere, what was important through this very dynamic process is the more dynamic you are, and, at the end, you need to have a framework to understand how you have to deal with this. And this was the intuition even before Shafi'i. In the Sunni tradition, we put this in the, the work of Shafi'i and Risala, trying to, in fact, come with a better understanding, a kind of categorization of what was done, and try to get a, how do we extract, it's the Mbad al-Ahkam, extract the rules from the text, and having a framework explaining what we can do. So giving some rules and giving some uh, 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 priorities in the way we have to deal with this. So the first step was, in fact, fiqh in history came before usul al-fiqh, the fundamentals of uh, 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 Islamic law and jurisprudence. Uh, and I translate in English, fiqh 
Islamic law and jurisprudence. I think that the very uh, understanding that it's only jurisprudence is problematic. <coughs> the the way it was thought by the Fuqa, it's also the, it, the, 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 the legal framework plus the dynamic with it. So, so plus the jurisprudence in the way we have to deal with, with this understanding of the, the, the new context, the new challenge. So Usul al fiqh came afterward to give a framework and to categorize the way we have to deal with uh, 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 the text and in fact the way we have to extract the rules from the scriptural sources. So it's a long tradition within the legal tradition, within this legal tradition, between being very pragmatic and trying to I don't know. So what can you hear me? So what I was saying is that from the, the practical legal tradition that started and then through the work of the, the ulama trying to, at one point in history when they saw that this very positive fact that it was very pragmatic could end to something which is completely scattered because we, we don't we don't know how to deal. It means that you are so much connected with the world and pragmatic and, and implementing rules that you may uh, 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 lose the rules from which and through which we are getting these rules when it comes to the scriptural sources. So Usul al came as an answer to something which was in history, pragmatic answer, implementation needs a framework, needs al usul the fundamental, how do we extract things from the text. So it's in fact a kind of a framework between the scholars and the text in order to read the text and to be able to extract the rules that are connected to the, 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 the context. So this is coming out of what? This is a human construct. In fact, it was not there at the very beginning. What was there at the very beginning? El Qur'an was Sunnah. This is there. And then, the scholars are trying to do this. So, in fact, we saw in history that uh, even with the sciences, some of the methodology, some of the way they were dealing and, and creating this categorization, this is something that we have also to ask ourselves. Is this uh, written in stone, or is this, is, do we have to be also questioning this tradition? And what uh, it's important is through my work, I have been, for example, for 20, uh, uh, more than 20 years at the beginning when I, I, I was starting about uh, radical reform, dealing with felt and trying to answer the questions in what? In, for example, in Muslim majority countries or in the West, very, in a very pragmatic way. What should be our answers uh, when it comes to new challenges? In the way we are dealing with fiqh, in a practical way. Fatawa, Ishtihad, so the critical uh, 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 Muslim uh, uh, reasoning and how we have to deal with the scriptural sources. And then you come and say, okay, it might be that we have a problem the way we are very pragmatic is helping us to answer a small question, but not always to be have to have the whole vision. So sometimes you can be correct as to the small answer, the very detailed answer to a challenge, but you are not getting, you are not reaching the goals. And this is where being right on the long, on the short run doesn't mean that you are wrong, you are right in the long run, in the vision. So this is where my take on this was, we might be wrong in the, the methodology, and it came from this. Now, uh, it's a very long tradition, and what we have to be critical is, are we today, with this long tradition, reaching the goals? Are we fulfilling the very essence of the message? And this is why I said at the beginning, recapturing the vision of Islam, the message of Islam, within and sometimes beyond the tradition. How do we recapture? How do we get this again? And to try, are we succeeding or not? So, so this is the whole discussion about this introduction is the legal tradition was very dynamic and no one can say it's not. It's very dynamic, but it doesn't mean because you are dynamic that you are on the right track. It doesn't mean that dynamics per se is showing that you are moving the right way. And then also, uh, uh, through the framework that was given by the El Usul it's uh, uh, the people who were working on the framework. Uh, uh, once again, they were giving us the, uh, 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 something that we have to, to reconsider sometimes in the way um, uh, we have to deal with the scriptural sources. And this is where uh, I want to come up three parts in my talk. The first one is, in fact, the very question is not only about the methodology, it's about understanding Islam. 
it's very much about this. Is at the end, even when we talk to you know different trends within Islam, we, we, we might have to start with the basic things. Is how do you understand Islam? But what is the very essence of recapturing the essence of the message? It's at least trying to get the message and say, okay, what do we have to do with this? And my uh, 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 take is that in many, with many of the scholars, you know, I'm coming from the reformist tradition, <coughs> uh, 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 the tradition of Isaah, the tradition of Tajdi, the tradition of that Tajdi is the renewal, Islah is the reformist trend, it's al Ijtihad as a central tool for us to understand, Ijtihad meaning serious as to the tradition. Uh, aware as to the challenges of our time, so it's in between this critical uh, intellectual reasoning. But in fact, within this, uh, coming from this tradition, I realized in, in my work uh, and dealing with the tradition that sometimes you use the same terms, you use the same concept that we don't mean the same thing, because it's the message that is uh, to be questioned first. So, so let me come to this. Is when Thumma Jalnaga ala Shariati min al Anfat Tabeha. We put you in a Sharia, specific Sharia. First, what is essential here is that you can see that if you look at the, the Islamic tradition, even the understanding of Sharia is not the same among the scholars. It is it is from the different trends. So we are talking about Islamic law. We are talking about the path. We are talking about the past that are bringing us to the source. Fat Tabeha, you have to follow the path, but what is this part? What are we talking about? How do we understand this? Thing? And this is where, uh, uh, when dealing with Fuqaha, in the way we are, they are, and this was, you know, the people, the scholars with whom I was interacting the more in all my studies, in fact, because I thought this is where we have to start. We have to be critical on the legal tradition in this. It's just how are we going to come with new answers? But Intactively understood, that's not the point. The point you have, you can be very pragmatic with your answers, and we are not agreeing on what? The message of Islam. What is, the, is this message all about? In fact, is two things that were essential. The Islamic message is to change the world for the better, starting by changing yourself for the better. So, is Islah al nafs or Islah al mushtamaat or al alam It's to change the world. So this is something which, once again, is be careful. If your legal tradition ends up for you just to adapt to the world the way it is, that's not the point. You are very dynamic in the way you deal with the rules, but you are losing the vision, which is don't get the world as it is, but change it for what is better. It's the same with yourself. And this is where you come to the Sufi tradition. So the mystical tradition, you understand that there is something which is very essential here. Is everything, in fact, Sufis, the true Sufis is the heart of Islam. Not, not, I'm not talking about this uh, new age Sufis that you don't know it's all about. It's, it's about flying much more than educating. So I'm talking about the, 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 the true Sufi tradition. And the true Islam, in fact, the true message of Islam is about what? Is about when you have, for example, this, we are repeating this, but there is something which is very important in the verse. In Allah, which is Islah al nafs which is to change yourself. Meaning, look at yourself the way you are, and what is coming from God is a book telling you you are who you are, but in front, before God, you have to be better than who you are now. It's a process of, in fact, purification, which is the skiat al nafs It's all about getting the message, getting the very essence of the message, uh, the message, educating yourself to be somebody who is better. So, so better means this is the responsibility. You cannot say before Allah and before human beings, you know what? I'm who I am. Take it as it is. I'm sorry, that's not, you know, you are who you are, come. I am your brother and I want you to be brought better than who you are. So this is the very, and, and this is the way we understand spirituality. Spirituality is a transformational process inside. It's exactly the same with the world. It's exactly the same. The world is the way it is, but you are here to change this. So you need to think about the legal tradition in terms of how do you use the rules? How do you use the fatawa not to adapt to the way it is, but to make it a better place to live? It's essential here, yes, because you can be very focused. You know, in, in, in uh, contemporary sciences, <coughs> I just uh, uh, wrote a book with uh, a sociologist and anthropologist, and he was talking about fragmentation of knowledge. 
And he was saying something that we see ourselves, it's not coming from, it's not the Western process, is you become so specialized that at the end, you are right in your field, wrong as to the global vision. Fragmentation is not a you are very effective, but you can push and push and push in this, and then the vision is lost. And then in film, it's exactly the same. We push, we push, we push, we have fed hours. Every day we have, we have councils. But at the end, is this in the light of the vision which is changing the world for the better? So we might start with this, because I realize that some of the scholars say, no, I'm sorry. This time is not about changing the world. We are just, the world is the way it is, and Allah gave it to us the way it is. We are trying our best to remain Muslims, whatever is the world, which is not the same understanding. So we, may ha we might have to start with this discussion, which is about understanding Islam. So it's changing the world. And uh, the, the third thing which is important is, from an Islamic perspective, the universality of Islam uh, and the, the universality of the message is very, it's, it's very important to get this, to get this in a clear way. Is in fact, <clears throat> our tradition and the message of Islam is, you Muslims, you have to change the world for the better. But get it right. You are not the only people who can do that. And knowledge is not coming only coming from you. And this is, in fact, if we, we understand the very uh, uh, meaning of uh, if knowledge means something, we made you tribes and nations in order for you to know each other. Meaning what? It's just you have to get things from others. But in fact, the knowledge beyond the fact that it is uh, in the light of the Qur'an, the knowledge is coming from everywhere. So you know this, which is not the Hadith Sahih, but it's uh, 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 the reference, it's important. Al-Hikmatul al Muslim is that the last property of the Muslim is wisdom. And wisdom means, be careful, it's not only knowledge, it's the right way to use knowledge. It's the right way to use things. It's, to, uh, it's just to, write, to use the right thing in the right way or the things in the right place in the right time. And this is coming from everywhere, meaning that we don't have the monopoly on knowledge, and we don't have the monopoly on the right way to use knowledge. And this is where we have to come and to take from others. So the universality of Islam is to acknowledge the fact that we have a specific root, that there are other roots, and we have to take from others. So to change the world is not only us versus all the others. That's not right. And this, again, is important, because if in you, you are in the field of fiqh, you tend to think that it's us. It's, it's we are trying to come with the answers and not challenging the whole vision. So three things here that are upstream from the discussion. And don't they take them as uh, uh, easy as that. They are very critical. Yes, first, uh, following the path. And this path is beyond. It's following the path means what? And I forgot to say this. The first one, following the path means what? Your legal tradition should be thought in the light of the, the goals. The path is telling you know where you are heading. The limits are helping you to know what is the goal, but you are not to, you should not be obsessed by the limits because at the end you don't know where you are heading. So path means there is a meaning in the way you move. There is a way. Follow it, you have to follow that. So it's rules that have to be understood within the whole message and the vision and where you're headed. Second, the very understanding of the message of Islam to change the world and not to adapt to the world. Third thing is not only us, it's not we don't have the monopoly uh, of this and that many things, in many ways, uh, could come through different uh, 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 traditions, civilizations and religions. And, I, and, and I, 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 I should say that in many ways there are some Islamic answers today that are coming from people who have nothing to do with Islam as to the, the very understanding of some of the, the principles that are implemented. And some so-called Islamic answers that are not so uh, uh, Islamic as to being faithful to division. So we also have to be self-critical and self-critical and at the same time have a critical understanding. Now, having this upstream, so you get here, questioning the legal tradition, the first is, let us talk about these three things. Path, and then uh, mission, changing the world, and then partners. Who are the people who are involved in this? Having said that, what are the challenges to come to, to recapture this message? So once again, everything that I'm going to, think, to, to, to say here is built in the light of what I said now. It's, it's the way we understand Islam and make it 
uh, I, I really think that there is one step that is missing in the critical Islamic thinking is this one, is the fact that we, we, we think or we tend to think that we agree on our understanding of Islam as a, 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 a power, a, mis a message to change uh, uh, the world. Having said that, what are the main challenges? The first, so I have five, five challenges that are part of uh, uh, everything that you will have here, and you will see this over the days, you will see uh, 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 these uh, uh, challenges work. The first one, the big one, which is the challenge of terminology. Terminology uh, is an important one in many ways. First, because uh, uh, when you, you, you look at what was done by the Fuqaha in the whole tradition, the whole tradition from Shafi'i or if, for example, some of the people when they were dealing some, you know, all the scholars, and this is something which is a very deep Islamic tradition, and it comes to the people when even they have, you know, opinions that were perceived as Shazza, meaning they are not the mainstream, all of them, and the power of that. It's, uh, they were always starting with, by this word I mean. By this word I mean. It's not, it's not coming from the West, by the way. This was something which is essential. But once again, by this word I mean in your field, in Mustalahat, could take a very specific understanding and meaning in your field. So it's not because you are precise that once again you are precise in the light of the whole thing. And sometimes we have to come to the terminology. The terminology is important within. Within, like, for example, when we, we speak about what do you mean by Sharia? If you look at what is happening in the Muslim majority countries today after the so called revolution, let's say the awakening, uh, we can see among the people who are referring to Islam, we don't agree on terminology. But not only here, just go to the States and look at the discussion about Sharia implementation. The, the Muslims, not the non-Muslims who are criticizing, the Muslims they don't agree on what we are talking about. So here we have to, and then among scholars, in the way we deal with this, depending if you are a faqir, uh, a jurist, or if you are a Sufi, or you are uh, someone who is coming from uh, another tradition, the reformist or the Salafi, we don't agree. Between the Salafi and the uh, 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 Ahl al we don't agree on some of the definitions here. So we need to do this internally. That's a very first step, important. More important as well is that we can see that if you deal with sciences today and you don't come with a clear definition of what you are talking about, you're not going to get this. When we had the first, uh, one of the first uh, uh, seminars on bioethics, it was quite clear. And then in the field of bioethics, when you read what is coming, well, the European Union, we had discussion, and we had uh, one scholar coming, he was coming from Yemen. He was not understanding the meaning of the, 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 the Western words to speak about some of the, 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 the very specific uh, way we deal with sciences. So, so the word that we have, very simple thing that we can have, you know, the starting uh, about uh, scientific words or terminology or uh, uh, philosophical uh, terminology, if you don't get this definition. So it's important to have terminology within the farm and in the field, and you have to be equipped with this. So you know that this is something which is a paradox. It's, 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 and in fact, it's, it's the risk. It's, we need to be very uh, precise as to our terminology and at the same time to have very clear understanding of words and at the same time to have the overall vision. So we need to be very specialized and at the same time having this in the comprehensive. But terminology is essential when it comes to sharia, to fiqh, to usul, and then all the, but all the, 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 the words and the, the, the specialized words that we have in specific fields. But what I'm talking about here in the legal tradition, we need to come with definitions. We don't agree on definitions in general. The second one, the second challenge is categorization of knowledge. No one can deny today the fact that if you come to Islam today, the people or the scholars who have authority are mainly from Baha. It's as if when we come to this, except in some trends, for example, al Murshid or, or the one who is the spiritual educator will have the 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 the, 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 the will be the, the, the main uh, reference. But I'm talking about Islamic sciences today, when we come to Islam, the great majority, and you know, 
authority and power is not always uh, to be uh, assessed through the way it's put on paper. It's the way you can deal with the community. Muslim majority countries and Muslim communities in the West, you can see that very often the perception is we are waiting for the answer coming from the Fuqa. Give me a fatwa, give me a legal opinion, give me the framework. And this categorization of knowledge could be un uh, understood through our history. But the problem here is that when we tend to think that the whole answers are going to be from Fuqaha, we are putting the practical answer to contemporary challenges, the first. But the vision, the, 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 the. in fact, if you put law as your first science without having a philosophy of law, the philosophy of law is very clearly the, the usul, the framework for which you look at this, you can be lost. So we need also to discuss this categorization of knowledge, which is important and is a challenge. Third thing which is important as a challenge is to uh, put and to be clear about our goals and our purposes. What do we want to achieve? And what do we want to achieve? This is where uh, the discussion should be clearly on the message and in the way we use sciences to reach the goals. <coughs> so, in fact, uh, uh, the goals, this is what should be the reference to assess your means. Meaning, what do we want to achieve from the, the legal tradition? What are the purposes of our understanding of these dynamics, the dynamic way of dealing with the, 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 the scriptural sources? And this is where we have to be uh, 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 critical is one of our challenges. Now, the, the fourth uh, 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 challenge in this are the references and the means that we have. If you come to the Muslims, we all agree on one thing, we have two main references that are now discussed. The first one is the Quran, the second is the Sunnah, the prophetic tradition, and knowing that within the prophetic traditions we have disagreement as to what is uh, Sahih, what are the levels, how do we deal, depending on, on, on some of the issues, and we have differences between, for example, even the way we deal with the tradition between the, 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 the uh, Maliki, the Hanafi tradition, the Maliki tradition, or the, Shia, the Shafi tradition, and then Add to this also the way we have to deal with some of the hadith uh, not accepted by the Shia tradition. We have lots of this, more discussion, of course, on hadith, but we all agree that we need both to come to, 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 to this. Now, is it enough? And this is where, uh, uh, how, what was implicit in the, the uh, Islamic tradition from the very beginning is that we come back to the sources, but we always take into account the world around, the situation. It's the world, it's the, 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 the natural laws, it's the culture around, and this was put within the tradition, you know, which was, these are our references, sometimes implicitly and sometimes quite clearly. In fact, the great majority of uh, the rules when it comes to uh, uh, that are taking into account the, the, the environment. But now, we need to get this. If we have an understanding of that we have to change the world, and that we have the sources, what are the sources of our critical thinking? How do we have to deal with this? And sciences today are telling us, if you want to change the world for the better by only referring to scriptural sources, you're not going to make it. That's not possible. Because the scriptural sources are always helping you to raise new knowledges, but not to use new knowledges to change the world. So the legal tradition is very often a resisting process by definition, is resisting to the change or adapting to the change. Resisting to the changes, these are the rules, and uh, uh, adapting is let us uh, uh, find a way to have less impact from the changing world to our legal tradition. So this is where one of the challenges is about our, our references and the means that we have to use. Last challenge is with all this is to set the methodology, and the methodology uh, in our work, what we have this morning is a manhajiya that uh, uh, Shafi will uh, also talk about uh, uh, this morning, and, and this is the whole discussion that we have today. But uh, 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 it's how, with our sources and our references, based on clear terminology, getting the right purposes, we come with a methodology that is helping us to use the sources the means to reach the goals. This is where we are. In doing two things, taking into account the sources on which we all agree, the Quran and the Sunnah, and through
through the tradition it brought through what was done by the scholars and beyond what was done by the scholars is for us to come with a methodology that is fitting our purpose now to change the world here and now based on this and not uh, to adapt to the world uh, 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 to the world uh, today uh, and only in, in such a way. So the questions that are coming from in Manhajia that was I was uh, 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 trying to put here is once again four things that are challenged with all this. Uh, so these are the challenges and then the questioning that should come out of this. Uh, in the legal tradition. The critical questions that we need to have for our tradition. The first one is, as I uh, uh, told you, working on, on FERC, coming to a point where I was seeing lots of new fatawa coming, and very often the fatawa are helping us to resist to the world, to adapt to the world, and then very often using two critical concepts that we have every time, it's a necessity. We have no choice. The world is as it is. It's a necessity. Out of Darura, in the name of Darura, let us have this opinion. Or an Hajj, necessity. So it's because it's, it's necessary. You cannot do this. So it's, in fact, nurturing a mindset of resistance, but also compromise. It's just we don't, we, we are not going to change the world uh, because it's like this. So, so let us find a legal framework that is helping us to protect ourselves. This protective on the defensive mindset is problematic. So this is where uh, the, the, uh, there is something which has to do with questioning the sources of legal tradition. And in the book, uh, uh, and this is one of the, the, the main uh, 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 foundation of what I call the radical re uh, uh, reform, is to understand that we need to challenge the legal tradition by the status of the environment and the universe. In the universe, you have rules. In the universe, you have rules that are not going to change, and you have things that are going to change. You have in the universe al qatai and you have in the universe al dhami al qatai means the natural law are not going to change. They are here, and we have to respect them. If you want to be serious with the text, you better know what is unchangeable in the world. You better know, for example, things that have to do, for example, with human psychology. If you understand that it took nine years for the Quran to help the people to get rid of drinking alcohol, it means that there is something which the minds and addiction that we have to take into account. You just come say haram, haram. There are things that are haram, haram straight away, but we need to deal with how do you change, how do you take into account the world? How do you take into account things that are coming from psychology, things that are coming from uh, 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 sociology, things that are coming from experimental and uh, 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 natural sciences. So you need to get this as a source. Why? Because it's when you get the sources uh, together that you understand how do you read the text. And in fact, is to put the text and the context, the, the natural, the world, the universe, together as sources of your understanding of the way you deal with the references. So, we had discussions within the center about Mazdar, uh, uh, is it the source of legal tradition? And this is for me one of the main things that uh, 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 comes with our understanding of uh, uh, the legal tradition, is that what was implicit with the scholars should be explicit in our mind. The world is a source of what help us to produce legal thinking. The world is a source because there are laws here that you have to take into account. Sunnatullah, it means he, it's the reference in the Quran as well. And when he speaks about Sunnatullah, he's speaking about the world. He's speaking about this is what I wanted for you to come uh, to understand. So you, there is no way to understand the text if you don't try to read the context. And in fact, Aqra bismi rabbika madhi khalaq, read in the name of your Lord who created. It's also to read the world as much as you read the scriptural sources and you need the two. And if you go only with the legal tradition, you are not going to change the world. Because the world is telling you how you change it. The world has the, separate, the secrets of the way it has to uh, be dealt with in order to change it. So this is something which has an, a consequence. In anything that has to do with, you will see uh, the way we, um, we deal with the second uh, question is about the legal tradition, which was the first pragmatic science and sciences that you have uh, uh, 
in Islam, we need to deal with this in a way which is, we have to be very careful. By stressing on, 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 on rules, uh, uh, we also tend to do two things. One I mentioned and the second one that I wanted to add. The first one is to stress or to be focused on the rule and to forget the objectives. And as I said, if we are talking about the path, no understanding of the law without understanding the objectives. It doesn't mean that in the name of the objective you should avoid the law. No, the way you understand the law is in the light of the objective. So this is why I completely agree with some of the Hummah saying today, this new business about the Mahar said, you know, the objective is sometimes say, we are so we want so much this objective that we are going to be not so clear about the rules. No, the rules are the rules, and halal halal or haram haram, that's clear, but the objectives are essential. So in Muamalat, in Muamalat, in everything which has to do with you know social affairs interaction, we need to be quite clear on this interaction, is that we need to get three things together. The law. The meaning, which is the ethical side, if what is the meaning of the law, and, and you know it's not new, once again, anyone who is saying the maqasid is just, you know, if you look at the fuqaha, the way they were dealing with al-anda, al-hikma, al-ubudiyya, al-qasd, al-maqsad, it's all this, it's there already. The whole philosophy of the usul is there in the way the fuqaha, but when you are focused on the rules and you just think about the rules, you forget or you miss the big picture. It's there. The, the, you know, what I want to say is the methodology is already there. You need to have it done and to understand this in a, a, a more comprehensive way uh, in the whole uh, framework. So this reconciliation between the rule, the meaning, and the objective. al hub al akhlaq and, and this is essential. And akhlaq is also the way you deal. You know, and akhlaq is, is very much the backdrop through which you understand the rule. In the man, I told you, tell me my makari, my akhlaq, I was sent by to beautify, to complete the good character. It's also to understand that the rules have an objective, which is to change you for the better in the way you behave. And in fact, by behaving better, you will change the world for the better. And this is why we are, وَكَذَلِكَ okay, جَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَصَطَةً is this uh, uh, community of the, the middle path, but we said, لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَ عَلَى النَّاسِ is to bear witness, and the way you are going to do this, الْأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالنَّهَيْ عَنَى الْمُنْقَرِ so is to promote what is right and to resist what is bad. So uh, this is the second point. The third one is what I said. The very consequence of that, Yes, the way we are talking about the reference is not only the scriptural sources, it's also the world. Second, reconciliation between rule, meaning, and objective. Third, is to go from uh, an adaptational reform to a transformational reform. In fact, the law in the light of the, the, the objectives are here to help us to change the world for the better. So, I'm talking here about the transformational reform, meaning we need a, a very creative new ishtihad, not only through al qiyas which is by analogy we have a new challenge which are to implement is to use all the apparatus, all the methodology to help us to change the world. So it's transformational. What I was saying is that if it's only legal, it's by definition adaptational. The law are adapted to the world. The law in the light of the objectives taking into account the ethical side is to change the world. But to do this, you need to have both knowledges together. It's the, the knowledge of the text and the knowledge of the context. We need both. So the only people who can help the jurors, the fuqaha, to change the way they deal with the rules are people who know the world and helping them to say, look, you have to have a vision ahead, not to adapt to this, but you need to get where we are heading. Signs are heading somewhere. If you don't know where we are heading with sciences, you are going to have law that are heading somewhere else. So use the law in the light of the knowledge in order to change the world. So this is where the transformation of reform is essential, is, is rethinking ishtihad in the light of the methodology that I put at the beginning. I hope you understand what I mean. Last point that I wanted to do, uh, to, to, to raise here, is you can understand here that we are challenging or questioning something which is essential. And this is why we have some resistance. And it's good to have some resistance, it's good to challenge the resistance, and it's good also to ask ourselves, are we uh, 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 using the right uh, means? But we are talking here about authority. Who decides? 
who has the right and the power to set the, 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 the rules and, 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 and in fact to give us uh, some of the prescriptions or, or some of the, the, the principles or some of the rules or some of the fatawa in order to change the world. And this is where for centuries, the, if you are coming with a defensive mindset, you are only going to rely on fuqaha. They come with the legal thing and they resist the world. They say, this is it. This is the fatwa, this is al hub Well, al, al fatwa If you want to change the world for the better, if you want to be, implement it, to be involved in this, if you want to come with the first essence of how do we extract rules from the text, which is also the third, and now, how do we change the world for the better, which is understanding the world, you need to have a shift in the center of gravity of authority in Islam. And this is why some of the scholars were quite reluctant at the beginning to say, well, what do you want to do? Recapture the message, not more. By challenging the authority. But the problem is not coming only from them. It's coming only from the Muslim community. We are so much expecting from the fuqaha to give us a fatwa on things that we are nurturing the defensive mindset. It's, it's, and this is why we have to challenge it. This is why we started with our seminars to have scholars of the text and scholars of the context together and challenging both of them. Not only to challenge the scholars of the text, it's also to challenge the scholars of the context because many of the you know, medical doctors or, or sociologists or economists, they have an understanding that uh, when you get science, you get it all. No, you get a, a, a way to do this your science and not, uh, uh, sometimes you have to reassess your own definitions of things and your own way of dealing with your science. So this shift in the center of gravity of authority in Islam is also say, in anything which has to do with the fatwa process, with ishtihad process, we need ishtihad jama'i. Jama'i means people coming together. It's scholars of the text and the context. One scholar is not going to make it. It's not possible. It's now, it's so complex that when it comes to any science, serious sciences, you can't just come with, you know, I know the text, I'm going to give you the answer. No, you are giving, you are going to give you one answer that will be completely wrong as to the way it is, as the way you have to challenge. Having said that, uh, I think that this is where uh, uh, we are in, so, so this is questioning the legal tradition. And you can see something in all what I said. There are sources that are respected. There is a tradition that is respected, but it's a tradition that is questioned as to the way we understand Islam, the purpose of Islam, and then the means that we have. <coughs> Coming with four questions here is the first one is, uh, uh, as I said, the sources, or and sunnah, other secondary means, but also the world, which is essential. The third is this reconciliation. Law should be thought in the light of ethics and, and both of them in the light of the objectives. That's uh, included. And then to go from a, a transformational reform, to, from an adaptation of reform to a transformational reform. And this could be done only if we start with the first one, which is coming together. And the last point is we need serious as Muslims to take. And this is part of, of the uh, questioning the authority uh, and how authority is working. Once again, not to destroy everything by saying the Quran is not the Quran, and I'm not saying this, I'm very clear on this. The sources are the sources. It's the methodology and the way we are distributing authority that is a problem. That the scholars and fuqaha are instrumental and critical. Of course they are. We cannot do without them. But they cannot do without others. That's my point. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's it. This is, uh, I think it was quite good this morning with uh, 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 sticking to 50 minutes. So I think we still have 10 minutes for, if you have to question what I'm doing here, and then we'll have, uh, uh, I think that there is a, a rest between the two or not. Oh, yes, it should be something uh, as to the timing. I have the program, we'll see. Go ahead for the, the, the 10 minutes of question and we'll see how we, we organize the rest of the morning. Can you, can you speak louder? When you're talking about reconciling knowledge of the scripture and the knowledge of like the sciences in the world, do you mean like a disproportionate kind of reconciliation? Because we know science is theory, right? So a lot of times science turns out to be wrong or it can be wrong, or new sciences that are happening, we're not entirely sure. Whereas with scripture, most of like, Muslims believe like that is the word of God, so you're sort of 100% on that. 
Um, whereas with signs, you can't necessarily be certain in the same way. So when you're approaching it in a Muslim mindset, do you mean disproportionately or proportionately? Disproportionately, I don't get that. Like, like more weight kind of on, on the scriptural stuff because we're certain with that, whereas with the sciences, we're not so certain. The, I don't think it's it's at the same level. Of course, we there is the certainty of the, 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 the sources as to the principles, what we can do, what we cannot do. This is something that is a reference. Now, when it comes to science, we or sciences or experimental sciences, uh, at the level of at the level of our knowledge at the time we are, it doesn't mean that we are saying that this is certain and trying to do some what some are trying to do. It, it happened in the Christian tradition, it happening in the Muslim tradition, is to try to say, oh, everything is it, it what is in science is already in the Quran. That's not true. The hypothesis and what we are as to the scientific knowledge, this has to be understood. Now, for example, we have ethical questions that are coming uh, out of the level of knowledge or the, 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 the substance of knowledge we have in a specific field. Taking this into account, with all the hypotheses and, and trying to understand from the scholars what are because this is exactly the point. Who are going to tell who are the people who are going to tell us this is still hypothesis? Even if for example about evolution, the level of understanding with Muslims about evolution is very superficial. If you say, okay, one I you know, Darwinism is not is not all of it. You have lots of biologists that are saying the evolution is there. The conclusions are hypotheses. So don't answer the hypothesis while these are only hypotheses. Don't try to make Islam responding as hypothesis were the final answer. We need to be very cautious with this. And this is the way where, coming from science, we get from the scholars, the scientists, the, the, the ulama and waqa, we get also what is part of kind of certainty in this as to the principle within the knowledge and what are hypotheses. And then this is where we can come with a better understanding of what we have to deal with the fatawa. Here we are talking about legality and we are talking about uh, ishtihad, which is in the legal tradition. This is why the, the center is tashri'i islami wal akhlaq. It's not about you know coming with the final scientific answer in one field. We are not dealing with this. We are dealing with the ethical, legal answer at the level and with the substance of knowledge that we have now. So, so this is what we are talking about. But very often you see some scholars thinking that the scientific answer it's not a hypothesis, it's the final answer, and, and we are far from that. Even with things that, you know, in the field of, for example, uh, 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 bioethics and, uh, or the field, you know, some of the things that are said by the, the, the scientists are, this is where we are now, this is what we think, it's, and, and still we are discovering many of the, 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 the questions in, in, in uh, anything which has to do, for example, with the knowledge, with the brain, for example. These are things that we have to be very cautious. But the ulama and nusus cannot come with a clear understanding of this if you don't, they don't rely on the people who are in the field and say, okay, this is where we are uh, in that field. So it's, it's, it's I would say disproportionate as to the relationship to certainty when it comes to scientific counsel. Yes? Um, thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Um, I had a question when you said about, when you talked about losing vision and agreeing about the understanding of Islam, don't you think that we should be, like now at this time, um, like revisit the understanding of aqidah, of the doctrine, because people are getting indoctrinated in so many sources and in so many ways that they're losing the understanding of aqidah, the discourse of ya for everybody, for humanity. And then we can move smoothly to the understanding of sharia in the very particular um, context of the believers. Um, that, that's an interesting point, and I would put it, <coughs> in fact, in that degree. I think if you start with if you start with al uh, aqida per se, it might be problematic and divisive in the way you. In fact, you know, talking to the Muslim minds today, it's not only about the substance; it's the way you do it. But there is something which I think it's I, I, I feel this every day, and I am doing it now, every time in everything. But in fact, through what we are talking about now, this vision, this understanding of Islam. In fact, you know what it means? It means that you can't get this if you don't come back to a Tawheed and understanding Tawheed. That's as simple as that. 
What do we mean by Tawheed? In many, by the way, not only external, outward, it's inward. It's very much the understanding of La ilaha illallah. And I would say La ilaha illallah and uh, Al Amana, which is the very understanding of your relationship with Allah uh, and the fact that you are vicegerents in the world. All what we are talking about here is this it's who are you? Who? How is your relationship with God? And how is your relationship with the world around you? This is a lapida. This is the very understanding of that. It's the world, the invisible world on which and through which you get the vision. That's essential. But I wouldn't go for this straight away because you are not going to reach it. But if you go through this, say, okay, let us think about the message. And then you come from the message to the means and from the means to the source and from the source to the aqidah. In fact, you are right. You have to be, you know, I, I, don't, I don't buy this very old categorization that we have in the truth. I understand where it's coming from, but I don't agree with, you know, uh, for the I, I think it's wrong. I think I think it's 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 clear, but misleading. So I, I prefer something which is deeper and to the point. But I agree with you. Aqidah is essential, and this is why understanding Islam is part of this. But in fact, it's the way you deal with you understand the very meaning of la ilaha illallah, and with la ilaha illallah, freedom and freedom accountability and accountability mission all this is coming together so your relationship with all the scriptural sources el kitab last one and all the and, and, and then and sometimes in, in the, the spiritual side angels so the last two questions and then we, we, we stop for yes one and two uh, just about the authority in practical terms uh, how can we challenge that how can we shift this, I mean, this question of being courageous and uh, even uh, challenge the reality of you, you're not having the authority anymore, anymore in terms of, uh, of giving the the ahkam, or is it, uh, uh, is it more like, I mean, among, among yourselves, when I'm at, you are going to challenge yourselves, each other, is okay, you know, because you have the, the legitimacy, you don't have the legitimacy to say, okay, uh, yeah, Sheikh, I mean, I, I disagree with that. And uh, we like must. Uh, you go to your chair, you say, yeah, sure, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, in terms of, because I think there's a problem of legitimacy. Maybe is it us, like the average Muslim, who's going to challenge uh, this authority and to, make, and to shift uh, to shift it? Or it is, um, I mean, between the scholars themselves going to yes. shift this? That, that's a good question. That's a good question because uh, what I said could be misunderstood. Challenging the authority doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge that there is an authority. There is an authority. The people who know the text, the ulama, they have an authority because they got that. Now, in many fields, and in the book I was mentioning, there is one field where the scholars straight away acknowledge the fact that they don't have the authority was medicine. Because it's life and death, because it's, it's criminal. <coughs> What is clear here, and even in the procedures when you read the discussion between the, you know, uh, the physicians and the scholars, you understand that sometimes you say, okay, we can't answer, tell us the answer. There is one discussion where uh, Ali Mashir is saying to the physicians, you have to tell us when uh, uh, death is acknowledged, because we, we can't do that, that's your job. So many show you, they acknowledge the fact that they don't have the knowledge the scientific knowledge. The problem is also the methodology that, you know, when I wrote the book, many scholars came to me and told me, we are already doing this. You know, we don't take a decision in economy without having a report or something coming, or people coming. That's not the, the way. It's not just come, give me a report, sit with me one hour, give me a, a, an old picture, I am going to give you a fatwa. It's more complex than that in everything. Even in, as I said, the terminology, the scientific terminology, the, 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 the structure of the knowledge. The, 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 so challenging the authority means to acknowledge the fact that you cannot do it on your own. That you need to sit with ulama al-waqa, the al-siya, so, so people who know about the world. And it's a, it's a dynamic process of discussion, us challenging this old reading and sometimes wrong understanding of some, even in scientific should be challenging the way they deal with their specialization. So it's a two-way process. And then to push, 
in fact is to create, to nurture the need for any exclusive authority to understand that we need the others to come with a legal opinion. In the light of what? Changing the world for the better. Not to acknowledge science as it is, but to, 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 to question even the purpose. So it's on a, a personal, and, and, and just to be clear on that, on a personal uh, 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 way, it's always good for any scholar or any student, any ordinary Muslim, when you have an answer coming from a, a, a sheikh, it's also to question this, is this really realist? Is this based on the knowledge of the world? So, so in your field, at least, you have to be critical. So critical as to the answer that you get is it's the first step to have a methodology that is helping. The center is based on this methodology, is this shift. Very, very quickly, the last one, and then we will have a, some rest before the second session. Yes? Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Professor Amala, after your lecture. So if uh, I think I understood correctly, you place yourself within the tradition of Ahl al tashdid um, So I, I kind of wanted to ask a more open-ended question, or a defining question of um, who, who would you put within the canon of thought or cite as examples of Ahl al tashdid um, You know, some people that come to mind that are kind of well-known as reformers in the last century might include Ali Shariati, Muhammad Abdu, Syed Nursi, maybe some people more contemporarily, um, you know, would you include females like Amina Wadud, Asma Barnas, or even um, Asma Lam Rabbit. Uh, you know, we had this last week at the summer school. Um, I think who, but also what types of knowledges. So maybe um, would you include Islamic theologies of liberation or Islamic feminisms? Are these things that Ahl al-Tashdid engages and learns from, um, yeah. That, that's a good question. Because uh, uh, when we come to the way I, I, I see it, but we might disagree here, but the way I see it, is that, you know, I have read, I think, all, all the people you mentioned, all of them. I'm following. Many questions that are put by these scholars, many questions are very interesting, and you cannot do without dealing with them. Does it mean that I agree with the answers? No. But many of the questions are. So I'm with a tradition where all the questions should be heard, and some of the methodology. All the questions. I want to listen to everything from within. Now, I have some problems with some as to the starting point of the discussion, and what is challenge, for example. So, so this is why, for example, uh, in Muhammad Abdu or in uh, uh, the tradition of some of the, even in the, the, you know, I'm very close with my heart and, and my understand, political understanding of how do we have to deal with the society with Ali Shariati. But I may disagree with some of the understanding of the reading of the scriptural sources. So I think that it's always being selective, open to all the questions, selective as to the answers and coming with your own understanding of them. I have a big problem, you know, I was discussing and challenging and having lots of discussion with Nas... Uh, 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 no, no, what is his... Nas uh, Abouzeh. Nas Abouzeh. Uh, uh, lots of discussion. And uh, we disagreed on many of the answers that... Uh, but I think he's putting some very interesting questions. But I have one big problem with him, is the status of the Qur'an. Because for me, the way he's dealing, for me, the, the status of the Qur'an is Kalam Allah. The way he's dealing with this, in fact, for me, is the understanding that many of the questions are understanding, but the first principle is problematic. Is that it's, it's part of Al-Aqidah, by the way. Al-Aqidah is that if you come, it's not Kalam Allah, it's problematic. And the way he's putting it, sometimes he's not always clear on that, but in some of the books, he is. So the way he is putting this, I, I very much like Sabah Mahmoud, understanding of this new trend of people who are pushed to, 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 to be, because you know, it's not this understand, it's not only scientific, it's not only scientific, it's ideological. So I'm very clear on this as well. So I was with him, with all due respect, he's a great mind. And by the way, he's, he, was a, he, he not only was a, a great mind, he was a good heart. But on this, I'm not going to follow him because this is the very distraction for me. So you understand, it's always open. And then Amina Wadud, many of the questions that he's, she's asking, very important question. The book on the Quran, gender jihad, very important question. 
now. Do we agree on all the answers? No. But we are ready to listen to all the questions. Because this is the only way we are going to be serious about our work, is to say, no, let us talk about this. And then, uh, but also have clear answers. So uh, being open doesn't mean that we don't have the wallet, meaning rules and, and references. Thank you. So I think that we can start for 10 minutes now, just rest, and then we start again the second session. It's Cher uh, uh, Chauvet that will be the next presenter. So thank you.